We've got no money coming in whatsoever. We're having to spend volumes of money to be able to technically reopen. Andy Cowell runs the Fen Bell Conservation Project in Kent. Here's our baby Binturongs. Zoos have been hemorrhaging money throughout the pandemic, with improvements on indefinite hold, while running costs remain high. This, this year was going to be our big new flamingo enclosure. That's all on hold now. Despite the sudden announcement they can now reopen, Andy needs another two weeks to get his small zoo ready for physically distanced visitors. The scary thing is I might have to cross the two out and put a one as we move forward. Even when they do reopen, it will be to as little as a quarter of his pre-pandemic capacity, meaning survival is far from guaranteed. I feel such a weight on my shoulders. All right. It's one of life's big dilemmas, I think, isn't it? <laughs> Is this a pub zoo or a zoo pub? Well, technically and legally, we're a zoo, but we do have a pub on site, so we have a bit of both. What could go wrong, eh? What could go wrong? Well, COVID-19 could come along and that could go wrong. Is any of this new because of social distancing? Yeah, we've just had all our signs made up, which are going up over the next couple of weeks. It's desolate. <laughs> There's no one here. As you can see, we've got a bit of weeding to do. The parrots we keep here are all expats. I can't take them all. We are on our max. And that is purely down to humans demanding they want a talking bird. Hello. 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 It's like a really bad Zoom call, isn't it? Hello? Hello? Hello. 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 No, I'm going to have to call you back, Mum. Hello. What the heck is that? A dinosaur, but it's sort of gone squashed in the sun. You think it's feeding time, don't you? Sorry, guys. This is two, three thousand pounds worth of work, you know, just to put a path in to be able to say we can social distance. It's a massive cost. Tank! We have a breeding programme for Asian otters. It roughly costs us around about £1,500 a week for vet bills, food and the general things that we need for the animals. However, where the figures start stacking up is we have three zookeepers that work here full time with me, two part time zookeepers, we have business rates, we have electric. And while a lot of businesses during the pandemic have basically gone into hibernation, yeah. you can't follow an otter. No, you can't. I, I get very, very cross that we have been left to beg. We went about three weeks and then we decided that we had to go and ask for money, otherwise we just would not survive. We've been amazingly supported, and without them people, the, the zoo world is virtually on collapse. There were headlines about possibly having to euthanise yep. animals. Is that realistic? Would that have happened? I work 24-7, seven days a week to keep these animals. They're not my animals, I'm their slave. Nobody will want to see an animal put down. They mean the world to me, and we will push anything out the way, any bills to get the best medical care, the best food we can for our animals. Where are these animals going to go? You know, I've, I had emails from people that say, I can take a monkey, I can take a raccoon. You know, it's not realistic. They would have to go to other zoos. How can other zoos take the animals when they are on their knees? You know, if we don't earn now, we will die in the winter. I'm talking about the zoo world. Hello guys. Well, these animals are not pets. They are ambassadors to their species. I think this is the future the of conversation. The future of conversation, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll walk around with uh, all the uh, glass boxes around us. We'll take you through to see the monkeys. Great. This is Bert. I know how you feel. A lot of the animals that we keep in the zoo are rescued, and these guys were. They were in the pet trade. We got Bert, Hector, and Ben. Hector hates everybody. These monkeys would potentially be susceptible to COVID-19. Yeah, as monkeys, we've got to be very careful that we do not infect them. And when we go in and feed, we will wear masks and bits and pieces, yeah. Come in, guys, come on. A lot of people don't like zoos these no. days. They think they belong in the past, right? Zoos are a dirty word. People need to understand what it is that a zoo actually does. These species, and we're not just talking about lemurs, rhinos, elephants, cats, they are declining fiercely in the wild. The wild is not there for them anymore. When you're losing so many animals all the time and so many species, eventually 
you're going to come to humans. We are not the top dog. We are there really, I think, as, as a victim of what we have done to the planet. This is a kickback on what we have done. So all the kids come down here and then we take them out on this little safari truck and we stop at three or four enclosures and discuss the animals. So this won't actually run at all? No, we won't be able to run this at all because ultimately the social distance inside of things. The real difficult situation is going to be when the crowds aren't coming in the winter. winter. Yeah, absolutely. I am convinced in my head that we will have in this country a big collection collapse and that will happen not now not in the summer but it will come in the winter electric companies and rents and all the rest of it have been very good and, and everybody's talking to each other and it's all very nice but we're going to come to a point where they're going to say i want my money this time next year if the worst comes to the worst it doesn't exist it will destroy me if we lose this place i feel such a weight on my shoulders, not just to the animals, but to the staff, to the people that have supported us, all the messages of good luck that we've got. I just feel that to lose it, we would, um, we would be letting everybody down. It's a heck of a weight you're carrying around with you. It is, it is a massive weight, but to do something that is, I'm sorry, something that is going to make a difference you have to give yourself you have to forget about what you want and what the worth is out of it and do something for the future and we've got to start as human beings you know changing i will fight until until i die to save it it's as simple as that